over the cracks. Sorry, forgot about that. When this was over, the gods counseled Rama. Tomorrow, the fifth day of the full moon, will be completing the 14th year of your exile, and it is imperative that you appear in Ayodhya on completion of this term. Bharata waits for you at Nadi Gram single mindedly. If you do not appear there, there at the precise hour, we dread to think what he may do. Rama realized the urgency and turning to Bihishana asked, is there any means by which you can help me return to Iota <clears throat> within a day? Bihishana said, I will give you the Pushka Vimana. It was Kubera's at one time. Later, Ravana appropriated it for his own use. It will take you back to Iota within any time you may wish. He immediately summoned the Vimana to be brought. Rama ascended this vehicle, taking with him an entire army and all his supporters, such as Bibi Shana, Sugriva, and others who are, were unwilling to part from him and started back in the direction of Aya Oda. As they fell along, he pointed out Siddha various landmarks that he had crossed. During his campaign, he got Siddha back? I missed Friday. Yeah, they got Siddha back. Okay, great. Siddha various landmarks that he had crossed during his campaign. And when they crossed the northern portals of Lanka, he pointed out to her the spot far below where Ravana had finally fallen. They flew over the mountains and forests. Every inch of ground had a meaning for Rama. He made a brief descendant at Kishinda, where Siddha had expressed a desire to gather a company of women to escort her when she entered Iota. His next halt was at the Arshwarm of Sage Paradwa, who had been hospitalized hospitable to him once. At this point, Rama dispatched Hanuman to go forward in advance to Nadigram and inform Bharata of his coming. At Nadigram, Bharata had been counting the hours and realized that 14th year was nearly over. There was no sign of Rama yet, nor any news. It seemed as though all his austerities and penances of all these years were fruitless. He looked forlorn. He had kept Rama's sandals and thorned on a pedestal and was re re reigning at, as a regent. He summoned his brother Sargujana and said, "This my time is up. I cannot imagine where Rama is gone and what faith has overtaken him. I gave my word to 14 to wait for 14 years and in a few moments I will have passed it. I have no right to live beyond that. Now I pass on my responsibilities to you. You will go back to Iota and continue to rule as a regent. He made preparations to emoli emoliate himself in fire. Saru Rujna argued and tried to dissuade Bharata in various ways, but Bharata was adamant. Luckily, just as this moment, Hanuman arrived in the form of Bar Brahmin youth. And the first thing he did was to put out the fire. Bharata asked, who are you? What right do you have to extinguish a fire I have raised? Hanuman explained, I have brought you a message from Rama. He will be there presently. Bharata would finally leave him, whereupon Hanuman assumed for a moment his gigantic form, explaining who he was and then narrated to Bharata all the incidents that made that had taken place these 14 years. Now make a public announcement of Rama's coming, he concluded, and, and let all the streets and buildings be decorated to receive him. This changed the, this changed the whole atmosphere. Bharata immediately dispatched messengers to the city and made preparations to receive Rama and led him to his rightful place back in Nayota. Shortly, Rama's Vinama arrived. 
Rama's mothers, including Keiki, had assembled in Nardi Gram to receive them, him. Then the reunion was a happy one. The first thing that Rama did was to discard his austere garments. He groomed and clothed himself as befitting a king, and he advised Siddha to do likewise. Bashita received the new king and queen and fixed the hour for cor coronation, interrupted 14 years before. Okay. So the epilogue, Rama entered Iota after 14 years of exile, a time during which he rid the world of evil forces that had tormented it for centuries. It was a happy reunion at, at the capital. The coronation festivities interrupted 14 years before, before, before were resumed. Oh, they missed a word. All Rama's friends and supporters were around him, Hanuman and Sagriva, all the rest from Kishinda were there in human form in order to conform to the physical features of their host. Vishipsana, Rama's successor at Lakna, also was an honored guest. Rama was surrounded by his mother and stepmother, even Keiki having shed her harness by now. The kings of the earth were there and also all the gods in human form. For Bharata, it was time of the supreme satisfaction. His vow to see his brother on the throne was after all being fulfilled. The time of trials and sacrifices had ended for everyone. At an auspicious hour of the chosen day, Rama was crowned as the emperor. He sat on the throne with Siddha beside him under the white umbrella of the state as described by Dashwatha, holding in his right hand his ka, ko, da, 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 kotana, the bow at ha, he had served as all these years. Lakshwama stood on the step behind him, devoted and watchful, and Hanuman knelt at his feet, looking up, with his palms pressed in worship, ready to spring into action at the slightest command. Hanuman, when he was young, as he said, as we saw in earlier chapters, had advised his father to dedicate his life to the service of Vishnu. He had followed his, this advice without a second thought from a moment he realized that Rama was none other than the incarnation of Vishnu. Hanuman is said to be present everywhere wherever Rama's name is even whispered. At the corner of any hall unnoticed, he would be present whenever the story of Rama is narrate, narrated to an assembly. He can never tire of hearing about Rama, his mind may, having no room for any other object. The traditional rant narrator at the beginning of his storytelling will always pay a tribute to the unseen Hanuman, the God who had compressed with himself so much power, wisdom, and piety. Hanuman emerges in the Ramayana as one of the most important and worshiped characters. There is a belief that, that to meditate on him is to acquire immeasurable inner strength and freedom from fear. The story of Rama actually continues with the enthronement of Rama, but in the traditional narration, the storyteller would show great reluctance to reach the end. He will describe in minute detail as Kamban has done, the arrangements for the cor coronation, the antecedents of the guests and the glorious impressions they are carried in the minds where they return home after enjoying Rama's hospitality for one full month. During his narration, the storyteller would not miss any chance for contemporary reference. He would compare the Pushka Vimana to the modern airliner with an additional capacities that it would be pilot, piloted by mere thought and would its space would ex, could expand to accommodate as many as, as would want to get in. One may rem remember that Rama invited an entire army to travel with him when leaving Lakhna. On another occasion, the narrator would have referred to the Bala and the Adi Bala, mantras that as a kind of air conditioning in those days. 
with such occasional flashes of modern narrative, he would enliven, enliven his narration, but in the main, he would known all the 10,500 stanzas of Kamba, Kamban by heart and quote them freely in song or verse and also make his narrative significant with physiological, <laughs> oh my God, I can't say this word today. Physiological, I, it's not the way you say it. Philosophical, there we go. And religious interpretations now and then. His oral narrative would come, would cover in course of 40 days, the whole period from Rama's birth to his coronation and would be addressed to his audience, numbering anywhere from a couple of hundreds of thousands, each installment of narration occupying not less than three hours. On a special occasion, such as the episode of Rama's marriage, of course, he would slow down and go into details of the wedding, and he would be rewarded by his audience with gifts of clothes and money, and he himself would distribute sweets to celebrate the occasion. Again, when Hanuman presented Rama's ring to Sita at Ashoka Bana, the audience, having subscribed among themselves, would present him with a gold ring. And when he brought the story to the pleasant conclusion, the portrait of Rama enthroned, would, ca would be carried in procession with lights and music. I am omitting, omitting a sequel which describes a second parting between Rama and Siddha with the later delivering twins in the forest and concluding with Rama and Siddha leaving this world and returning to their original home in the heavens. But this is not part of the story, is not popular, nor is it considered to be authentic, but in later day additional to Valmiki's version, Kaban does not take note of the sequel, but concludes his tale on a happy note of Rama's return to Iota, followed by the long reign of peace and happiness on earth. And there, there I prefer to end my own narr narration. Press this glossary.